Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Todd Verrill, and I'm with the IQ Business Group. Uh, IQBG, as we are known, is a leading provider of records and information management solutions for the public sector and highly regulated industries. We take great pride in helping folks develop their records management programs. And thanks, Todd. My name is Tom Jacobs. I'm a senior federal account executive for ActiveNav, and we are an advanced file analysis data discovery tool uh, that is used widely within the federal government and both the civilian and DOD space. Glad to be here today. So Todd, I'll set the scene for us here today. Uh, you know, you're gonna kind of go through some of the approach to compliance, uh, some of the best practices. We'll jump into some of the uh, uh, forward-looking strategies, uh, et cetera, and then get into Q&A. So I'm gonna throw it over to you, and uh, as needed, I might chime in uh, where appropriate. Tom, that sounds just great. Let's get started, and you know, M1921, Tom, as you know, is really nothing new. It's merely uh, a supersession, if you will, of, of M1218, one of the goals of the MGRD, or the Managing Government Records Directive. That thing focused heavily on email management as one of the primary goals. But if we fast forward from that 1231-2016 deadline for federal agencies to manage all email records in an electronic format, and the second deadline of December 31st, 2019, for all permanent electronic records to be managed electronically, we're kind of right on course with what we now call M1921, and that helps build upon those key goals from M1218 to uh, support the government's quest to drive all electronic record keeping. But let's take a little bit closer look and Tom, I also know something about you. You're a big New Year's Eve person. Um, but something tells me that 12-31-2022 might not be a favorite future date for folks on the call today. Uh, that's okay. We're going to help them prepare, get ready, and knock this thing out. So New Year's Eve will be all about New Year's Eve. And M1921, as you now know, encompasses all federal records, permanent and temporary. And those targets require that by 1231-22, both permanent and temporary records will be created, retained, and managed in electronic format. But in addition, agencies are going to be required to convert records to electronic or store them in commercial storage after December 31st, 2022, as NARA is saying they will not accept paper. Um, no big deal, right? We've got, what is it, 619 days or so? Uh, who's counting? But maybe counting would, would start to be a good idea and we can help you with that countdown. Let's get into some key dates and deadlines on how we got here. Now, I want to note that this is not an all-inclusive timeline. The policy overview for electronic records management goes back to, what, something like November of, of 2011 uh, with that MGRD memo. And there's also several narrow bulletins that came out along the way that have been very helpful. But here's just a few key standouts. So we've got the 12-31-2019 deadline, again, as part of M1218, goal number one, agencies were required to manage permanent records in electronic format. Tom, I'll just say this was an eye-opener. If there was ever a time that surfaced agency arm challenges, uh, this was it. And agencies answered and responded. And that's also why we have you know, our friends at NARA who have developed lots of expert guidance along the way. In particular, I'll touch on the September 30th, 2020, where NARA offered policies, guidance, and processes to support this federal transition. Um, and really this ended up being all about something called FERMI, and folks on the call might have heard of this and, and looked into it as well, 
or they use Fermi as a resource. This is known as the Federal Electronic Records Modernization Initiative, much anticipated by agencies as it provided some really key tools to help out. One is the Universal Electronic Records Management Requirements, or ERM, uh, supplemented that with universal use cases that folks can use as they put together their own requirements. And then an output of Fermi, I believe, is something called the Federal Integrated Business Framework, or FIBF. Uh, that was an output of Fermi. But one thing I really want to touch on in this guidance that was put out is something that NARA helped with, and that was developing a new electronic records management solutions category for procurement purposes. Uh, this was formerly known as Schedule 36 before recently being consolidated into the recent GSA mass or the multiple award schedule. Now I talk about 36 here because this is a big deal. It provided agencies really with peace of mind that approved vendors on schedule 36 were certified to deliver solutions and services software that met ERM requirements. And as an aside, I do need to state that both IQBG and ActiveNav have been awarded five-year Schedule 36 contracts to provide the software and services under what is known as SIN 51600. So long story short, uh, folks on the call, rest assured you are in good hands. Um, moving on, the, the next date is the December 31st, 2020. Sorry about that, Marissa. In adhering to uh, Section 2 of M1921, OPM also helped because guidance thus far did not have a lot of things like job descriptions or job series described regarding uh, records management tasks, electronic records tasks, roles, responsibilities. And that was a big deal because agencies have expressed for quite a while. We've seen SAORM after SAORM plus other surveys and research indicating that staffing for RM programs support does not always align with demand. So that was a big deal. And then finally, the, the two dates coming up, 12-31-22, uh, all records electronically and the transfer or conversion to paper with the day following. Technically, I guess you would call that, Tom, the day forward approach, um, January 1st of 2023rd. Digital only transfers to NARA paper will not be accepted, or at least that's what um, NARA is telling us now. Tom, there's one thing I, I want to mention that you don't see on this timeline, and it's something very important to agencies. And, you know, that's this progression or shift of information management technology. I know you'll talk about this in a little bit, and I'll touch on it as well in a second, but I don't want to forget that. And uh, I'm just reminded as I talk about NARA and Fermi, I want to reference Records Express. That's the official blog of NARA. And that's a great place to be informed of the latest and greatest. So please check it out if you haven't in a while. Records Express, it'll come up in your Google right away. And hey, that's my plug to our friend, uh, Lisa Haralampas. So, okay, we've got a timeline. Let's get rolling, right? Well, here's the catch. Uh, just as I pointed out, and you know, Tom, projects of this magnitude take time. Um, I'd also like to stress that even though you know, everyone has the same compliance requirements. There is not going to be a one size fits all approach that will integrate those so important um, business and mission requirements that we need to have because we can't stop doing business. We can't stop going. So not only are we talking about multiple projects for the RM program to meet compliance, but the planning stage alone I think needs to receive a lot of attention and due diligence and agencies have additional requirements to consider as records management now spans what we what we refer to as this information ecosystem or landscape but we know time is the essence so let's talk about where to start we know the challenges and requirements we're talking about with m1921 um, whether they're at the Fed level or those unique requirements are part of any RM strategic initiative, uh, starting can be overwhelming. Where do I start? And 
Tom, I'm pretty sure you're going to agree with me here. While M1921 contains lots of key dates and deadlines, those fundamental requirements and challenges associated with M1921, they're not really new for either of us. ActiveNav and IQBG, we've been helping federal, state, and local, and private uh, meet directive requirements like M1921 to help them eliminate their paper, to help them with electronic record keeping, you know, for clearly over a decade. And in doing so, there's a, there's a nice little byproduct here. We've helped those agencies improve their RM programs with the solutions we've provided. And we always learn that no matter what, they are all leveraging people, process technology, no matter how you slice and dice it. By the way, this is not really a sales pitch, but it is important to talk about this because there are fundamental steps we leverage with each type of project we do, and we refer to these as our keys to success. And moving on, before we uh, get into some of those, let's first frame up uh, some homework or some of the common prereqs that agencies need to think about in order to ramp up for next generation federal records management. First of all, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Thank you, Peter Drucker and others. But Tom, in short, the discovery phase of any of these projects is so valuable. Um, you know, when we talk inventory, it goes beyond record types and schedules, very important. But now more than ever, I think knowing where records are born, where they live, how they're managed across multiple systems and apps in this information ecosystem is so important. Along with all of your standards, what, uh, what is your records volume by type, permanent, transitory, temporary, non-record? How's your storage currently? What does storage look like for the future when we move to this uh, all electronic means of records management? And finally, what are your record formats and what condition are they in? Let's think about long-term retention. Let's think about preservation, two pieces of the ARM life cycle that sometimes can get overlooked. One output of this discovery phase includes getting a handle on record schedules. And Tom's going to tell us a lot about that in a few slides. But I'll, I'll also say many agencies find this discovery phase, this inventory phase, as the perfect time to leverage their findings to maybe update their schedules, uh, to maybe consider consolidating schedules, and maybe even going after you know, something like the big bucket approach. For ActiveNav and IQBG, one of our keys to success is always to consider end user burden. And we do everything we can, or if we haven't, we haven't you know, done our jobs. We want to relieve that end user burden as best as possible. And you know, big bucket approaches is, is just one way to help us do that. Uh, finally, you know, Tom, two underlying requirements of M1921 are eliminating paper, and striving for digital born backed by electronic records management. The way we work toward both is another one of our keys to success and that's business process management. You're gonna hear a lot of words for this, could be business process re-engineering. Um, there's, there's lots of ways to describe it, but it's really imperative to define the systems, the policies, the processes and roles, or maybe just validate. Maybe you've got something in place, you just need to revisit this stuff uh, to understand where your, where your records are managed, where they're generated, uh, and, and connect the dots in between, and those are the gaps we can help with. This exercise is so important, this discovery piece, uh, inventory piece, because if you spend time now to define or validate those processes in the current state, when we look forward to the future state, we can start to leverage automation to meet the requirements of M1921 and the business that improve those processes. But we know we can't just do that if we don't have something uh, defined currently. So let's move on to process and best practices. And I'm just gonna draw attention to two things here. One, 
again, there's really no one size fits all approach. Everyone is going to be at a unique point in their journey and they're going to have unique requirements outside of meeting M1921. Number two, if you focus on the bookends of this slide, the stuff in the middle will happen. And I'm sure there's people saying, yeah, right, help me out here. What is this guy talking about? But Tom, I know you'll agree, the boxes in the middle are very common proven steps that they will yield results. But understanding where your RM program is now, meaning have you had an assessment in a while? Do you do an internal assessment? Um, and what you want your ARM program to represent and how it's modeled, meaning applying and living by those RIM policies or uh, ARMA IG uh, governance policies, whatever, whatever model you go with. We've li just listed one, but there are many. That sets the cadence. And as we've experienced, drive the culture. And I think we all know that culture and change are two components necessary to conquer M1921. Okay, so to get on the road to compliance. What I'd like to say here is, you know, if your RM program remains at the center of focus, something interesting begins to happen. The road to compliance really is driven by the RM program instead of compliance requirements dictating the RM program. You know, these are these are common phases. We know we need to go through discovery. We know we need to go and define or improve policies and processes. Hopefully leverage technology to supplement what we currently have. Um, leverage technology again for things like defensible disposition. Leverage technology for things like uh, metadata that is going to transfer to NARA with those requirements. Proving who is the custodian of what. So these future migrations are intelligent, so to speak. Records are properly formatted and enriched for the future. They're findable, they are retrievable, and they meet their requirements. That's, that's a common phase. And all of these will contribute to success. Don't get me wrong. But again, I am going to go back to that one very important component we, we talked about and con must consider. And that has to do with the shift I mentioned earlier. And I just want to briefly talk about uh, something before I hand this over to Tom. In just the past several years, you know, things like M1218, M1921, they've created new information management challenges, and there will be more new information management challenges to come. They won't go away. We'll just have more. Um, something else is happening, though. Terms like ECRM, enterprise information management, they're starting to shift into what we all now experience daily, especially in COVID times, as content services, how we access things like this very call and the information ecosystem. This is the modern workplace uh, and, and these systems, apps and collaboration tools are all connected. And since they're all connected, they are gonna impact what we do in records management. Um, Tom, what I'm getting at is just like ActiveNav and IQBG, make relieving end user burden a priority for all of the ARM projects we drive. And it could be anything from file plan analysis, development of big bucket record schedules, your dedicated software that provides the automation, uh, supporting ARM processes. You know, those are outputs of the work we do. What we wanna also focus on though is the inputs using uh, software during the inventory and discovery phase to establish a baseline and take that end user burden away. And what I'm starting to allude to is Active Nav Discovery Center. And I believe that's what Tom has got some great details on today because it provides the tools to efficiently help us with that inventory discovery phase so we can hit the road running and be off to meet M1921. So I'll stop talking now and I will hand off to Tom. Yeah, and, and Todd, I think you you hit on a number of key things, right? You know, the staffing uh, challenges that all agencies have, the time it's gonna take uh, to do this, 
um, end user burden you mentioned multiple times, right? That's that's you know reducing that, um, simplifying the processes. Uh, and, and automating and and that's where we've come in in projects that we've worked on with you is having a tool and discovery center is is that that tool uh, you can't manage what you don't know you have and and I have yet to meet uh, one federal agency or department that doesn't have a you know ton of unstructured semi structured data um, that has to be you've got to be able to you know find uh, you've got to be able to you know map and discover what it is. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, you've got to be able to do the, the data cleanup, but do it in a in a way that you, you have tool, the tools are automated and end users that aren't RM specialists uh, don't have to uh, manage the process. You certainly have to have uh, data modeling tools uh, that help you with the auto categorization of files according to whether it's single record schedules or in many cases, multiple record schedules. Uh, you know, knowledge sharing, all the associated taxonomies. Uh, you clearly have to have tools to do the metadata tagging, uh, and uh, and then you know, obviously, migration becomes the easy part, right? Once you have that. So, what Discovery Center does is it was built on a base uh, from an RM mentality, right? It was built to automate finding, uh, you know, cleaning up the data modeling it in a in a in a sandbox environment before you you start trying to migrate and having the necessary uh uh you know intelligence because you 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 know if you if you've got all the metadata making sure that you're associating the right metadata that you need to, to meet compliance and to your point really more importantly the overall rm uh, structure and strategy that that you help clients build as part of these projects right uh, but then being able to automate that governance because that's the other part, right? You you have this, and I'll talk about it in a second. This kind of this mass of what I call dark data, not dark web, but just data you don't know anything about. But you're going to have more coming in, and how do you manage that moving forward? So uh, really, that's what Discovery Center does. And and, uh, and I'll just give a couple of quick examples that we've done with some clients. So. You know, for the two examples I'll give, uh, both DOD and civilian, really the key was they, you know, they knew they needed to get to M1921 compliance, uh, whether they were, you know, in this case, records liaison officers or other RM uh, folks, you know, they they knew that they had a lot of data that was unstructured that uh, that they, they had to manage, they didn't really understand. And so in this case, they took a pilot where they, they looked at to, you know multiple features, right? The, they needed to be able to discover, cleanse, remediate uh, sensitive data, et cetera. And in this this end result, they were able to scan uh, um, over a million files. They were able to reduce the dupli you know the, the duplication and rot, the redundant, obsolete, and trivial data, the stuff that isn't records that doesn't need to be there, and and resulted in a very conservative. We see typically higher than 11 percent. Uh, savings uh, in total uh, uh, storage size. Um, it, they've now implemented this is as a uh, as a project uh, in a full outside of a pilot in a full enterprise environment. When we look at a civilian client, uh, they did essentially the same thing. However, in their case, uh, they uh, they were really more focused on the the categorization according to uh, record schedules. Uh, but they still had to do the the cleanup part, right? Because they don't want to, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And so uh, they did a similar pilot. They used a, a series of R, what I'll just call out of the box rules to identify these obsolete uh, files, uh, and then uh, you know find the anything that had sensitive data, PII, etc., so they could remediate that to quarantine uh, locations, so they wouldn't have any potential for spillage. Uh, and and then you know once they had that they were able to share that data uh, again end user burden being very low send that data report reports wise out to their end users to make decisions about the actual remediation and ultimately they believe now because they're implementing it that they are going to meet the deadlines uh, for M1921 because they have a tool in the background to do the heavy lifting at what I'll call scale and size, right? So this can be scaled from very small, you know, terabyte size uh, uh, data sets all the way up to things that are in the petabytes. And you have to be able to have systems that can scale that as well. So 
Just lastly, I, I think I'll finish on this idea of, of trying to get to zero dark data. While this is not sort of in the general ethos of M1921, uh, it, it isn't a term that's widely used. It's one that we're, we're using more and more with our clients here at ActiveNav because there is this mass of data that's there. And whether they're redundant, obsolete, and trivial data or it's records, it's there and it's taken up space it's taking up time, it's creating end user burden, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's creating you know, RM challenges. And if we have tools like Discovery Center that can go in and analyze it and understand what you have in all those file shares and, and, and uh, uh, repositories that isn't well managed, now you're able to, as I think Todd put, you, know, you did put really well, this isn't just about compliance, this is about having good, clean, RM processes uh, moving forward. So, uh, you know, I'd like to certainly throw it out there to uh, you, Todd, and talk a little bit about some of the things that you do at uh, at IQ Business Group. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Um, you know, again, IQBG is a leading provider of records management and information management solutions. We do focus on public sector and high re highly regulated industries. Sorry. Um, you know, since about 2008, we've been developing what used to be known as ECRM dedicated uh, solutions, and we still do that. Uh, but we also work with now what is known as content services solutions. And for folks on the call, just think of how many of you leverage Microsoft 365 for your, your day in, day out. And the, the unique thing we're finding, again, as technology here is both the uh, enabler and the disruptor is we all want to work together, meaning uh, there's going to be ways to connect into ECRM systems and there's going to be ways to uh, connect into content services solutions as well. And I think the, the solution providers are learning a lot from the end users here because what doesn't stop and we can we can talk about this all day long in the projects we take on is there's going to be a human involved in these processes and these humans end users they need to do day-to-day uh, -day activities and business and we don't want to disrupt that what we want to do is what Tom has restated is give them a solution where they don't have to think if they're not, you know, trained in records management or their goal in life is to be a records officer for the federal government. We don't want to change that. What we want to do is connect the dots, fill in the gaps. And that's what we're really good at doing. So it's all about people, uh, process technology. We focus on business first and then we, we see what is the best fit regarding uh, potential technology and Discovery Center is definitely high on the list for the folks that we have helped. Wonderful, thank you, Todd, and thank you, Tom. As promised, we do have plenty of time for questions, so be sure to submit those if you have any, but I'll start with this one. Do you mention, or sorry, do you anticipate any changes in the M1921 deadlines as a result of the pandemic? I'll let you take that one first, Todd, because you're probably closer to it. Yeah, I'll take that on. Um, you know, I don't like to say it depends or maybe. Uh, that's like a classic response you get sometimes. But the way to really understand if if there will be changes is to remain engaged with NARA, remain engaged with the federal records management community. Speaking from experience with the agencies we helped with M1218, and if you look at the statistics behind uh, how folks were readied uh, and prepared and have implemented solutions between when M1218 came out and even today, uh, you'll still, still see there's some stragglers who are, who are having challenges. So I think what NARA focuses on mainly is, is there progress? Is, are steps being taken that are moving in the right direction and the deadline is kind of like this sort of moving target. We want to make sure that people can do what they need to do. I anticipate maybe a shift in a deadline, but I don't want to speak for NARA, obviously. 
Um, however, I, I've also been on many NARA workshop calls and other federal government calls where this deadline is, is pretty hard set. And maybe something like uh, the COVID situation and the way we do work now, there might be a little deviation in the physical documents and physical records side because of the, uh, the sensitivity or the safety regarding access of physical records uh, in the current state. So I do anticipate some change. I just don't know what level of change that will be. Well, and, and I'll add to that just two things. One, I think you made a plug for the Records Express blog. That's uh, you, you, that's a good place to start. The second piece is don't wait, right? I mean, that's the problem that we're you know seeing with a lot of clients. I had three client meetings yesterday where they've just waited too long. And they have nothing. They're in the early stage of the maturity model. And if you don't start acting on this now, regardless of any push that may have, you're you're gonna it's gonna be just harder and harder for you to meet the compliance deadlines. Absolutely. So the next question is, do you have any tips for obtaining budget for compliance and records management programs? I'll take that first if you want, Todd. Um, I think, you know, in, with a larger project and, and I think the, you know, the tradition has been RM uh, isn't a, isn't, doesn't get budget until there's a problem, right? Uh, but what we have found is if we look at uh, business processes, uh, we look at the, uh, you know, some of the complement, what I'll call complementary R to RM components, whether they be uh, FOIA or, or some of the e-discovery requirements, that a lot of the same processes and improvement will feed uh, and some of the automation that you can get if you have good, clean data sets, uh, then you can start to see budgets uh, more readily attainable um, because again, even though it's not directly M1921, um, it, it, it has, there's, there's complementary components within agencies. So I, I'm sure Todd, you may have a different spin on that as well. Yeah, funding, funding is tough. And, um, you know, depending on what, what agency you are and what your mission is, there's a lot of variables in there, but I will say what we have learned working with agencies is, you know, Making the case for budget, um, you got to have the right people at the table. You have to have representation from the areas that, you know, records management impacts, and it really impacts everyone. Along with that, um, measuring risk, as, as tough as that might be when you think of the subject of records management, goes really far. And the big one that's, I mean, it's been on the radar for a while, is information request response to FOIAs. Um, how long does that take? And what is the, uh, you know, efficiency behind that now? What could the efficiency be? How effective is that right now? Those are all going to be systemic uh, functions of your records management program. And if you can start to put together, I've even helped folks put together a home-baked uh, risk matrix for, this is back in M1218, but how to gauge risk of email across various departments of a, a federal agency. And it had to do with the, uh, you know, the content type, uh, the, the owners of the content, things like that. But over time, you start to put some sort of data model together, and that data model is represented in a picture. And many times, you don't have a lot of time to put forward your case, especially for budgeting, or at least get it on the agenda. And having that picture to show what you know risk is, what could happen if we don't do things, um, kind of goes far. So stick with those tried and true approaches. Definitely. And you have, we've just talked about budget, Tom, you mentioned agencies and departments start late. Um, so those could be answers to this next question. What are some of the biggest challenges you see with getting started with a records management program? Uh, Todd, you I'll want to take that first? One. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's really what we've, uh, what we've tried to to uh, draw attention to with today's show, and that is 
look, planning is super important and you've really got to map some things out. But if you spend all of your time planning and going down the path of, you know, what could happen, um, what you'll end up with is you're, you're spending too much time and not doing. And Tom, you just said it a, a couple of minutes ago. If you take anything away from today, it, it is the action of do something. Uh, don't wait. Um, there's tons of information on records management, NARA, M1921. Remember, these are, these are requirements. These are regulatory requirements. Focus on your business, your mission, so you don't have to come to a screeching halt and anticipate. And finally, um, this has something to do with uh, the, the information technology shift. You've got to embrace that shift. You've got to acknowledge that technology is not going to throttle back. It's not going to scale back. It's full steam ahead for everything. So you've got to acknowledge it. You've got to embrace it. And you've got to plan for it. Get the right people at the table. Get leadership support and buy-in so you can begin and, and either continue your journey, pick it up, or, or start new. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more. I think the only two pieces I would add to that is, and it's, it's along the same lines to what you just said, Todd, but you know, analysis paralysis is not where you want to be, right? Do the right amount of, of, of planning. Uh, but then also, and I know I'm using you know, terms that, uh, that are maybe too widely used, don't boil the ocean right? You can start to do your data analysis and your data cleansing or the, the, some of the, you know, and it's not just active nav, there are other tools out there, right? It, you know, we're not the only one we, we may think we're the best, but the idea is do take it in chunks. You can start some of this work now. And then as you're moving along in the process and continuing to refine your program, you're not starting from square one. So, so look, look at, at jumping in and finding the, the low hanging fruit. Great, wonderful, thank you for those. And we will, we will end with one last question, but Tom and Todd's contact information is on the screen if you think of anything. So the last one is, um, and you both have mentioned end users multiple times and reducing that burden, but at what level should they be involved with the planning and execution of records projects? Well, okay, so I think if you look at it from an end user perspective, that's what you don't want to have happen, right? Uh, you, you, you want end users uh, to be, if they're data owners, to be able to just make decisions based on, on good quality data reporting or records reporting. Really what, you know, to me you want is you want SMEs in your records RM space to be utilizing technology, the people, process, and technology component. You know, your RM being the people, your your you know technology stack being the technology, uh, and and then good process that you've built out, to, so that the end users are only you know basically required to make decisions on things they own rather than doing the heavy lifting. Yeah, and I'll add to that. You know, the the end users are the folks you're going to get a lot of great detail and those essentially are what we take into consideration those details to formulate requirements those are the folks doing uh doing the work they are using the at least in the current state they are using what tools are available they are abiding by uh, requirements and business rules that have been formulated so we need to take all of that into consideration as we help them plan with their future state. So leverage your end users as the, the SMEs so we can, you know, essentially uh, build a better mousetrap. 